solving big problems today. How do we build a big, strong chest? So all these different things, you know, do we do dumbbells? Do we do barbells? What do we do, Jay? Isolation movements? I'm gonna answer that question today and what I'm gonna put this in a three-part series. The first one we're gonna cover today, bench press. So before I even get into this video, be sure to like, subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in my coaching service, be sure to hit the link in the bio below. But let's get into this topic. Okay. So we're going to start off with bench press before we even get into all the other different compound movements. You know, the dumbbell, bench press, flies, cable flies, all that kind of stuff. So this is going to be your bread and butter, your primary mover that's going to build the thickest, densest, and strongest chest. Okay. Why you need to have a strong chest? Because that helps with progressive overload. That is a big part of periodization. Uh, watch that video again because that is the key. You can't just go into the gym without a plan. You gotta have your roadmap, okay? So this is one of the easiest exercises of progressive overload because you can do it with volume, you can do it with sets, you can do it with reps, you can do it with weight, okay? But we're gonna be focusing on weight and technique today. Before you even get to the bench press though, what I see a lot of people not doing correctly is warming up properly. Making sure your lats are firing. Make sure all your rotator cuffs are, are ready to go because those small internal muscles are what's going to stabilize your shoulder socket and make sure you can move maximal load. So I'm going to show you some of the warm-ups you do before you even touch this bench press first. So a lot of things I see people doing incorrectly is going right to the bench. You know, like they go right to it, they start benching. Well, they haven't even warmed up the muscles that are going to be a primary role in stabilizing the bar path. By bar path, I mean how the bar is traveling to your chest and how it's going to complete lockout. That's extremely important because you want to optimize that movement pattern in order so you can move the load for a short distance of time and you're also getting the most muscle underneath the bar, okay? So one thing that you need to do before you even get to the bench press, you can go off chest builders, you can go off strength builders when it comes to the upper body. They start off with a uh, supinated grip, so underhand grip, lat pull down, okay? So this is going to hit your lats, it's going to get your rhomboids and a little bit of your rear delt. A big strong back is going to translate over to all lifts, okay? But especially for the bench press, again, you need that back one up. So right here, just about to lift apart. Super light, doesn't have to be heavy. Going for 15 reps here, okay? Full stretch, engage with left foot, full down, up slow. The reason why we're doing a super heavy grip is to get those biceps warmed up. Whenever somebody gets injured doing a bench press incorrectly, you do a pec minor and everything that's connected to the bicep, okay? So you need the biceps to actually firing too, okay? Okay. So now the bar, excuse me, now that our back is all warmed up, we're feeling good. Now we're gonna do some rotator cuff exercises. Okay. So let's get the rotator cuff warmed up. Let's get all the small muscles warmed up too, okay? So you already hit the back. Now we're gonna start with the rotator. First thing we're gonna do, we use your band, we use a cable. It really doesn't matter, but this needs to be light resistance. Very, very light resistance, okay? So we'll start off, do an internal rotation, all right? Starting here, make sure that elbow stays locked, okay? And we're just doing this here. 15 to 20 reps of back. We're gonna do that on both sides. And then after that, we're going to do an external rotation on both sides. 15, 20 on both of those, okay? After that's completed, we'll go to a high pull. Lock the elbow back. I like to think this one like the old school Jackie Chan movie, right? So we have like a villain behind you. Get a punch in them, okay? We're doing it slow and control, okay? So you have four internal rotator cuff muscles. And this is what's going to help us to warm it up and prime them because if, if not, if the lats aren't warm, if the rotators aren't warm, then we get to the bench press, you have a lot of negative consequences. That's where you see people like, oh, you know, like, my shoulder hurt, my pec hurts when I bench. Well, they haven't warmed up the proper muscle groups, the bar path is correct, and not using the right stuff to stabilize. That's what I'm going to show you guys today, okay? So before we even get to any weight, I want you to proper, uh, practice proper bar path and proper position, okay? So proper bar path and proper positioning. We're gonna come in, come on around here. Tight to the bench. Please forgive my 
pandemic mask. I have to wear this right now for those people in the gym, all right? So, tight to the bench. You see people out here with loose feet. Think about it like energy. You're losing power. You need to be using your full entire body in order to transfer up and through the bench, okay? So, nice and tight to the bench, all right? So once we get back, we're gonna get back to our position, okay? Once your feet are here, they do not move. They're locked into that position, all right? I come around a little tighter. So we're locked in this position. Now I'm gonna set up. I'm gonna drive my back through the bench to create that a little arch in my lower back, which is okay. So that's gonna be for stabilization and support of the upper back, okay? And make sure that I don't have any leakage. If I'm loose on the bench, you're, you're, you're leaving pounds on this off the bar, okay? So here. See how I'm driving that back to the bench, okay? Now watch the bar. Last engage. Bar coming down, pressing up, okay? So one of the key things with that bar path is coming down, top of the sternum, going up to the top to the clavicle, or just meet the jaw, all right? So what that's gonna do is having that arch in our bar path, the chest, interior deltoid, and lats, okay? Lats are a big part. So if anybody can move bar, I'm gonna put a little bit of weight on here, I'm gonna show you how this really looks like in real time, all right? All right, so now we actually have some decent weight on the bar. Anybody can move a, a, a bar just by itself and talk about practice technique, but I wanna show you underneath some load about how this exactly looks like. And I'm gonna tell you the reason why this is an important movement for you to maximize and to make sure you get correct before you even move on to all the other stuff if you want to build a big, strong chest, all right? So, again, with all those cues that I was talking about, I want you to see it in action now. I want you to watch the bar pass. I'm gonna show you the side, show you how tight I am, breathing, ball summer, all that stuff, okay? So here we go. things there. You saw the bar path, you saw the lat engagement, all the things I was telling you about before. And the reason why I'm going to call this the king of all movements is for one, we can progressively overload this movement. Meaning again, volume, sets, reps, load, all those things that you need to be strategically manipulating week to week, bi-weekly, monthly, whatever it is, okay? That doesn't say you keep your body guessing, that's just a planned progression strategy. That's what progressive overload is, a planned progression strategy. And the reason why this movement is great is because it involves so much muscle. You know, like when you do this, your lats should get a pump, okay? Your upper back should get a pump. You got your, your shoulders, your biceps, your triceps, and your chest, the chest, okay? It's gonna cause the maximum amount of stress to your chest, more than dumbbells, more than flies. Yes, the natural movement of your chest is to bring your arm to the center line of your body, yes. So if you have a hard time having that mind and muscle connection, it could be a good idea to start with a fly before you get over here, but trust me, try the activa activation exercises I told you guys about before, and then also practice the technique. Maximize the technique before you focus on those. Once you get that down, this movement, you can progress week to week, um, month to month, okay? All right, the bench press, the first part of this three-part series, okay? If you wanna make this all very simple for yourself, just download the two free periodized programs in the description here where I'll tell you how to overload the sets and reps week to week, month to month, okay? There's a non-linear and there's a linear block periodization style programs in there. But all right, so this is the first part of the three-part series. Next part, we're gonna talk about dumbbells, we're gonna talk about, and then we're gonna talk about uh, single isolation moves, so flies, cables, all that stuff. So be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in coaching services, again, link in the description.